In this topic, we're going to discuss antibiotics, in particular penicillin. So we're going to look at the structure of the bacterium and how antibiotics work. Then we're going to look at antibiotic resistance. So we're going to look at vertical gene transmission, horizontal gene transmission, the implications of antibiotic use, and why antibiotic resistance is on the increase. Now before you start this section, it's a good idea to go through your notes on B lymphocyte production and antibodies. Here you can see two types of bacteria. The one on the left is called gram-positive bacterium, and the one on the right is gram-negative bacterium. So gram-positive bacteria take up a stain, so hence they're called positive. They don't have an outer membrane, but they do have a peptoglycan wall. Now, one way that antibiotics work is by preventing bacteria from making normal cell walls. So in bacterial cells, as in plant cells, water constantly enters by osmosis. This entry of water would normally cause the cell to burst. The cell doesn't burst due to the wall that surrounds the bacterial cells, and this is called the peptoglycan wall. It's a tough substance that does not stretch. So as water enters the cell by osmosis, it expands and pushes against the wall. Being relatively inelastic, the cell wall resists expansion and prevents further entry of water. So it stops the cell from bursting. Antibiotics can either work by interfering with the cell wall synthesis or by making pores in the membrane. So here's a diagram just to show you diff how different antibiotics work. Some antibiotics, such as penicillin, inhibit the cell wall synthesis. Others inhibit the protein synthesis. Some antibiotics also inhibit nucleic acid replication. They can damage the plasma membrane or they inhibit the synthesis of essential metabolites. So the one that you need to know is penicillin. Right, how does penicillin work? Penicillin kills bacteria by preventing them from forming cell walls. The peptoglycans of the cell walls are long molecules made of a mixture of amino acids and sugars. These long molecules are held together by short peptide molecules that form cross linkages between them. Penicillin inhibits certain enzymes required for the synthesis and assembly of the peptide cross linkages in the new bacterial cell wall. So this weakens the wall so they cannot withstand the pressure and the cell bursts when the water enters. Now, in the previous topics, we discussed gene mutation. So antibiotic resistance to penicillin is due to a mutation that results in the bacteria producing a protein that can break down penicillin. Note, bacteria do not mutate because of antibiotics. The mutations occur randomly and are very rare. However, because there are so many bacteria around, the total number of mutations is large. Many of these mutations will be of no advantage to the bacteria. But occasionally, it will be useful and the mutant bacteria will survive. If a mutant bacteria survives, it's going to divide. This means that all the bacteria produced from the survivor will be of the mutant type and therefore resistant to penicillin. The gene for penicillinase and hence antibiotic resistance is going to be passed from one generation to the next and this is called vertical gene transmission. Mission. This means that the resistant form is selected for rather than the non-resistant form when exposed to penicillin. Those penicillin-resistant bacteria therefore gradually dominate the population. The frequency of the allele for penicillin resistance increases in the population. The allele for antibiotic resistance is carried on the small circular loops of DNA called plasmids. These plasmids can be transferred from cell to cell by a process called conjugation. Resistance can therefore find its way into other bacterial species and this is called horizontal gene transmission. Now horizontal gene transmission can lead to certain bacteria accumulating DNA that gives them resistance to a range of antibiotics. 
These are the so-called superbugs. New mutations that give bacteria resistance to antibiotics arise randomly all the time. However, the more we use antibiotics, the greater the chance that the mutant bacterium will gain an advantage over the normal variety. In time, and with continued use of the antibiotic, the chance that the mutant will outcompete and replace the normal variety becomes greater. So the more we use antibiotics, the greater the risk that resistance will develop. And antibiotic resistance is on the increase because of a number of reasons. So let's have a look at them quickly. So antibiotics are used to treat minor ailments whose symptoms are trivial. Antibiotics are sometimes used for viral diseases against which they're ineffective. Patients don't always complete the course of antibiotics as prescribed. Patients stockpile unused antibiotics from previous prescriptions, and then they use them later in smaller doses. Doctors accept patients' demands for antibiotic treatments when they are not absolutely necessary. Antibiotics are used in the treatment of minor ailments in domesticated animals. They're used in preventing diseases amongst intensively reared animals, for example, chickens. And then finally, they're used by farmers and companies to reduce disease and increase productivity of animals. And that concludes our lesson. The end.